I'm Tony DeBona, and I was born and raised here in Little Italy, just not too far from where I'm standing, just behind us, or not behind me, right up this way. But anyway, I'm here with my brother Dominic, and we're going to discuss the uh, fishing industry that we had here in San Diego and uh, what our participation was here. And uh, so, Dominic. You remember this dock here, right? Yeah, I saw the boat used to tie up up here. This dock and that dock. And the, the jig boats used to be here on the other side of the dock. A lot of jig boats, oh my God. And uh, they had the small port saying a little tiny boat for anchovies and stuff park on the front side. But that's quite a while ago. I was. I was 10 years old when I went out with it to Benedetto Corleone and the four brothers. He taught me a lot. And then my father took me out. He was an engineer on the Pacific Queen. That was with uh, Tommy Carnelia, right? Tommy Carnelia. Yeah, I, was only, I was only 13 years old. Wow. I got on there and he says, you're going to go out for a dollar a ton. We made a 40 do day trip, 40 do day days. And, uh, he gave me a quarter. I said, oh my God, you come out again with us. I still was still in school. I was only 13 years old. He gave you a quarter share. Quarter share. That's pretty good. And then I went back to school. My father became a engineer on the Viking with Frank Brenner. He said, what boat you fish on, Dominic? I said, well, I went on the Pacific Queen with my father. I went out for a dollar and they gave me a quarter, so I'm going to give you a half. Now remember, it's a quarter share, not just a quarter. Yeah, a quarter <laughs> share, yeah. Yeah. So I went out with him and he gave me three quarters. I made another trip and he gave me a share. I was 16 when I went out with him because I had to go back to school again. But I've been in the fishing industry a long time. I can see it's not like it used to be. There's no more boats. It's all tourists. That's okay. Well, all the canneries are gone. Canneries are gone. We're industry making... here that was the uh, capital of the tuna industry of the world here in I San Diego. I navigated for all a lot of boats I was on. I had my license. We used to make the nets here. Yeah. The girls and the wives of the fishermen used to set up tents and we used to get money and give it to the kids for their illness, whatever they so had. Never, uh, so there were nets over here, I mean uh, tents over here, yes, yes. while the, while the guys were doing the uh, 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 the uh, net mending. On the weekend, they yeah, set up yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Well, that's great. And it's all we used to repair our nets here, make nets here. And don't forget, there were there was a fleet of boats tied up right here on this dock. Sometimes they're double. Double and, and triple sometimes, right? And then on that dock also. And also, you see where that steamer's at? I mean, that big cruise ship, big ship yeah. on there too. So there was a lot of boats there, a lot of canneries, a lot of work. Well, a lot of activity around here. It's exciting times, man. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I with, a, with the four brothers, it's a burrito. He, he taught me a lot how to fish sharks, how to fish albacore with the jig boat. And then uh, I was doing a war, then his son passed away, and, and he kind of went down, you know. But anyway, it was it was something that was really... Well, you uh, you eventually, uh, after the Mary Barbara, you were on the Mary Barbara. I, went, I had to go into service. Yeah. When I came out, I ran three boats. I ran the Southern Pacific, I ran the Southern Seas, I, and I was going to run the... Uh, Claudia B, right? Claudia B. Yeah. And then they called me to, I was going to fish for the, uh, run the Pacific Queen Steel, the big one. Yeah. I refused that one because it was always breaking down. But I had a lot of chances, but then I got hurt on the Claudia B, and, and that was the end of me. Now I'm, I'm here with my brother, Tommy, the boys. Yeah. And I'm, I'm 95 years old. Wow. And you still remember all of that, right? Yeah, I, I, I know my it's name. It's unforgettable. I know my name anyway. I know <laughs> yeah, what the hell I it's am. It's unforgettable experiences. You know, this, this like place yeah. was so exciting. Right to uh, my left over there are what we used to call the uh, finger piers. Finger piers, yeah. Right. And uh, we uh, had our 
Italian fleet down there. All the small boats were there. The families from Little Italy would have their vessels right here. There's three piers, and they were just full of uh, little boats. And uh, my uncle Leo had his boat here, the uh, Geronimo D. And uh, he would take me fishing with him a lot of times. I loved going out with him. We used to go to Mexico and spend a couple of weeks down there fishing and come back up this way. And uh, the, all the families, the Castagnolas, the uh, Camar uh, yeah, Camarda was here, and uh, gee, you, you name it. Every Italian name you can think of. Actually, Sicilian, a lot of Sicilian fishermen were here with their boats. But it was a great time. You could smell the Petri cigars. I remember those. They were uh, had a certain aroma to them. You could smell it as you walked along the pier there, and you can hear Sicilian dialects being spoken. The Mazzolis, the Castellamaris, the uh, Parmigianos. You know, it, it was just an incredible carnival-like atmosphere. You talk to the guys, and you talk to. Uh, uh, you know, some of the skippers about their trips. Everybody would exaggerate too. They would, uh, you know, say how much fish they caught, and you say it was a lie. <laughs> and then sometimes they yeah, used to say, that. Yeah, they used to call, Come on down, we'll have a few drinks in the boat. And we used to go down to the boat and have a few drinks in the day. Okay. Everybody was happy. Yeah. Oh, don't forget, remember, everybody was named uh, Tony or Mario, or Giuseppe, or, you know, there's hundreds of them. And also the Jackalonis were big. There were tons of Jackalonis down here from Mazzara. So nobody knew who, which Jackaloni you were talking about. So they identified them with labels. They put their own labels on them. Yeah. They would, uh, these are kind of derogatory, but, uh, you know, like Gulbundudu, Banzavagnada, what else? The Doran. Uh, the Doran. Uh, yeah. yeah, even Uncle Leo was. Uh, yeah, Benzetti. Yeah, yeah, he had a name too. I don't yeah. want to say it. But uh, he didn't even know what they called him. My father you know? was Marco. Yeah, Marco was my father. Because uh, that would identify him from the other Mario. Yeah, so. It used to be Jeep, Sammy the Rat, the Cat. <laughs> oh, oh, oh don't you don't forget the. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the sea lion. Yeah. Sea lion Sam. Yeah, Raka Johnny. Yeah. Sea lion Sam. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there were so many names that the same, you don't know who you're talking so you had to, you had to give them a, a code name. But it was fun, you know, down here we looked forward. There was a lot of work. It was hard work. Fishing is never easy, you know. See, you have Tony, to... here was all jig boats. Loaded with jig boats right here. Yeah, now look how empty it is. Yeah. Look. So there was one jig boat. He lived on the low street. He used to put his poles down for jigging come and come here. underneath the dock. Get over here. Look. Yeah. He used to come underneath the dock. Okay. Look at that dock. It's all empty. Yeah. Right in there used to be my uncle's boat, uh, uh, San Filippo's boat. I mean, just hundreds of small boats. And, uh, you know, we'd wait for the season. Like sometimes we'd go for, uh, what, halibut? with the nets, you know, and then we do uh, albacore around July when the fish were up here. And uh, everybody was hustling up and down the dock here, talking, bullshitting, and whatever else. But it was a great time to grow up, for me anyway. And uh, you uh, you also were out with the bigger boats. You were, you were doing uh, tuna well, with the tuna boats. The biggest boat at that time, it carried 2,000 tuna tunnels from France, way outside by... Panama. Yeah. Right? And, uh, I mean, it was a big boat. I mean, I ran that one, one trip, and that was enough for me, because it had French crew on there, so I had to speak French, so <laughs> I got the hell off of there. But anyway, I enjoyed fishing. I got hurt in the last boat, which was Claudia B. And here I am. I do the best I can. I'm 95 years old, I got cancer. And I'm happy though, I'm happy as a lark. Well, you know, getting back to the history here, we had so many canneries in town. There was a cannery right there. It's well, there used to be one there, and then down in National City, remember there were a whole bunch of them down there. And uh, that's what kept the industry alive. You know, we could bring the fish in and uh, process them. 
But then once the uh, industry dried up around, what is it, 1980 when things went away? Yeah. Look how empty these docks are. I, I just remember as a kid going down this dock, the other one too, if we were docked over there. And like I was saying earlier, you can smell the Petri cigars, the uh, tar from the uh, wharf. You know, there's a certain smell that comes off the creosote from the uh, piers. And, uh, you know, we used to speak uh, Sicilian down here. Everybody's speaking all their dialects. My God, it was so interesting and exciting to come here yeah. but now all we have are closed off docks with uh with the lobster traps the uh, season is over right now so i guess they're putting their traps over here as they say you know time goes on and things do change times they are a changing now you can see how close uh dominic we were to the uh, neighborhood up there it was just right up the street, Washington School. I remember seeing it up there. It used to be up that hill. But we were just right there. We can walk down to the uh, boats. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, you guys uh, with the tuna boat, with the big boats, you'd come in over here at the pier at the Barcadero. How many times we used to come down and watch the boats come in? I think you missed the ocean, huh? Yeah, I missed it, yeah. You get good air, you know, nice clean air. Well, plus uh, your wife doesn't gives you doesn't give you any hell out there. Oh, you stay by yourself, you know. Yeah. You're the boss. Yeah. You're the boss. That's it. Yeah. Well, you uh you ran uh, uh what the Southern Pacific? You did that one? Yeah, I did Southern Pacific, Southern Seas, uh, Navarra, which was French. Yeah, and. Uh, and how about the Claudia B? Claudia B, and no, I just I just navigated. You navigated with yeah, them, navigated. Yeah. I was gonna run it. I was supposed to run the Pacific Queen, the steel one. Yeah, yeah. But that one broke down. I didn't want that one. So, but in those days, captains start making changes. They start making big, bigger boats, taking care of the small one, giving it to Mexico, whatever. But there was a lot of change. And either they got boats that carry as much as 1,600 tons, 2,000 tons. Because there was a lot of fish out there, you know what I mean? Yeah, there still is, but yeah. we can't get to it anymore. You can't get to it anymore. Yeah. You got the markets selling fish, if they ever get a hold of fish. Otherwise, you got to get tilapia. You know tilapia? From Let's come on up here and take, stick our nose into one of the docks we used to go to. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Restricting area. Look at that. It was never restricted. I mean, we could go to the end of the dock. In fact, I remember we used to fish for uh, smelts there as kids. We'd take a little line, yeah. drop it down at the end of the dock here, and pick up a smelt. Remember the smelts? Uh, like this? Yeah, that was fun. We used to swim from here to the Coast Guard, too. Oh, is this where you learned to swim? Yeah, yeah, right here. That's Utsubiridito. Yeah. Yoni, yeah. Yeah, we used to swim from here to the Coast Guard station. Was it over there? Oh, right. that's a long ways. Yeah, we used to swim. Some I guys. You could do that now. No. How about with floats? <laughs> yeah, with floats you can. With the corks. Yeah. yeah. The corks. Oh, yeah. That was your uh, life preserver yeah. anymore. Yeah. There's a few boats left over there at Driscoll's uh, Wharf, I think, huh? They fish maybe hella, but if they get a chance. So. Yeah, well, they do, they get a few. But not like before. No. Yeah. Before you had shark, the, sh the government used to pay for the liver. You had that, barracuda, albacore, you got yellowtail, I mean, you got all kinds. The shark used to give the cans, 40 pounds, you get the liver of the shark, and they used to use it for perfume. This was during the war, right? Yeah. During the war, which is World War II, for those of you who are too young to remember. And the boats, <laughs> and the boats would, use, would be spies. In other words, you had, when I went to Pacific Queen, I was 13 years old, you had a radio, but had the seal. If you saw anything strange, you had to cut the wire, and then you call in. You know oh, I mean? was that for patrolling for yeah. Uh, yeah, we were, uh, enemy boats during World War II? So they allowed you to go down into the uh, Mexican waters, yeah. but you couldn't use the radio. Yeah, we went into the Gulf, the Gulf, we went back out again, 
was always bother, bother. You talk to the boats, bother, bother. Hey, they're getting fish up. That's how you get the word out and you go. Well, he, yeah, spots, yeah. That's it. Wow. But uh, we made a trip. I was 13, like I said, I was 13 years old. I was at a Pacific. We, we loaded up in four days. We were 44 days. We had a thousand ton. Went to Uncle Sam. The boat didn't even move, just stayed there four days. We got a whole big, uh, like a flotilla, huh? Yeah. But then I got hurt on the last boat, which was a Claudia B. They told me you could run that because the corporation started getting bigger. I got hurt on it, and that's the end of my fishing day. So now I'm making models. But I've quit making models. I made 20 of them. That's enough for me. My hands gave out. Yeah, so those, that fleet is now, uh, the model fleet is out there too now, right? Yeah. Yeah, I built two myself. I built one when I was 16 of my uncle's boat that used to be here uh, at the docks. It's still at the house, still good shape. Then I built another one, which is about 42 inches. Got to get that going again. Yeah, but we're all model guys, you know, we build models. We love the boat so much. Wow. You remember uh, You remember when uh, Papa came here to San Diego from New York? Uh, they came in from Sicily, yeah. stayed in New York. You were born there in New York, right? Yeah, I was yeah. born in New York. I came here in 1939. Yeah, that's no. when I was born over here in San Diego. 37, wow. 37. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Papa... And Uncle Leo bought the uh, Roma here, right? The, the uh, fishing boat, the Roma? The Roma. Yeah, they ran that. That was one of the first ones they had here. I went out one trip and throwing up on with them. <laughs> well, oh, I, I was on a, uh, Joanne Marie, too. Joanne oh, Marie. yeah, that was uh, Cotton Feet. Uh, yeah, San Filippo's San boat. San Filippo's boat, yeah, the Joanne Marie. It was over here, too. Yeah. It was docks. Tight there. It was a small yeah. boat and fish albacore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that Fisher was... was slow, so I went out with him. Now, uh, now, Papa uh, Mario De Bona, for those who want to know his name, Mario De Bona was our father, yeah. and uh, he uh, came in from New York, and he also went up to Monterey too, right? Yeah. And Fisher fished uh, sardines up there during the day, yeah. and then came down here and hooked up with Uncle Leo, and they got the Roma, right? He called Uncle Leo to come here. Yeah, and so they, they started their fishing careers that way. With the Roma. Yeah. With the Roma, yeah. And then Papa went to be engineer on the other boats. The Clara Marie uh, Mangiapani's boat. Mangiapani. Yeah. And, Mangiapani, uh, Moby Dick. Moby Dick, yeah, they're all around there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I yeah. Worked with, I worked with, you know something? I knew I worked with Moby Dick for years and never knew what the heck his name was. His so last thing name I said, Moby. I knew him only as Moby and Moby Dick. <laughs> Moby, what the hell is your name? Eh, feed you meal, come in. <laughs> so that was it with Moby Dick. But he was a good guy. We used to barbecue it. We're on the Mary, on the Mary Lou with John's father and Moby Dick. We had a good time on it. We made good yeah. money too. We made, Make pretty good money on the Yeah, my mother uh Mama Mama was uh was from Castellamari, Sicily. That's where our family came from. The uh De Bona uh family uh, was in Castellamari and uh they all migrated over to uh New York City, stayed there about ten years and yep. things got a little rough over there. Uh, you know, at San Francisco, they gave me to be a, a sea doctor. I was with the ticket. I can do little, op not operation, but fix for the boats. I worked on the Anthony M. Oh, you were a, uh, like a medic. Medic in the ocean. Like a medic, not yeah. a doctor. The guy lost a thumb, I put the thumb together. Oh, yeah, you tell, tell me about that uh, man uh, who lost his thumb. Right, you put it back together. <laughs> hey, you could have been a real doctor. You know that. You could have given up fishing and be a a doctor at sea. You know, for anybody lo lo loses his thumb, you could put it back together, guaranteed. Well, it's nice coming down here, Tony. Yeah, it is, Tom. You get out of that uh, hooch. You know, come out here, get nice air. I 
nice air. You see things you haven't seen in 20, 30 years. I enjoyed coming down here and seeing the water again. Yeah. That's a big plus for me. Yeah. We just have our memories left. And uh, hopefully our memories will carry on as a legacy, you know, of what we used to have down here. It was so beautiful and provided so much income and fellowship for everybody. This is nice. I'm down at war. You know what I mean? Give me a call whenever you want to come down here again. I'm here. You know what I mean? As long as they don't take me, you know, I'm okay. <laughs>